So, I mean, what the hell? Uh, <laughs> politics ends at 8 p.m. Everyone knows that. That's good. So, all right, look. Um, I didn't watch a lot of the presser. I saw the things that I needed to say. But the message that is going out regarding President Biden is that he is still in the fight. And because he didn't have a disastrous, uh, you know, presser, that that should be enough to keep him in the race. Uh, you be the judge. We'll see. And now I want to hand it over to the president of Ukraine, who has as much courage as he has determination. Ladies and gentlemen, President Putin. I didn't realize that Ukraine now belongs to Russia. So maybe it's true. Maybe Zelensky really isn't alive anymore. And, you know, now Putin is the president of Ukraine. I mean, that'd be news to us, but, you know, it's just, uh, it's just one gaffe. But there's more. I don't want to be overly critical of the president because we all make mistakes from time to time, but it gets better. Wouldn't have picked Vice President Trump to be vice president. Do I think she was not? Well, I mean, look, pres Vice President Trump, that's not good. And yes, I, I know Double K, he did correct himself, but you have to, here's the problem that Democrats are still making, and they're making them all the time. This is not a primary election. It's not a state election. What it is, is it's a national election, and the majority of voters now identify as independent. An independent voter is going to hear this and see this, and their attitude is going to be, I am not going to support this. This, this is bad. And I don't trust that the president is in control. It's not, there's nothing wrong with that assessment. Now, you can say that you're going to support him, and that's fine. I don't, I believe in the freedom of choice in every way. If you want to support the president, that's perfectly fine if that's what you choose to do. I made my position pretty clear. And it doesn't have to do with gaffes, but these gaffes are concerning for a lot of people. Not qualified to be president. So let's start there. Number one. Well, again, how you confuse Trump and Harris, I don't know, but he found a way to do it. And I think that people, again, have a right to say this doesn't look good. This again, it's it's not it's not a little mistake. It's it's a it's a it's a it's, a, it's significant. It is. It, you can't sweep this under the rug. And who's to say how much worse this is going to get. And I've been saying it for a long time. I do not believe, and this is my opinion, I could be wrong, but if I were a betting man, I would not bet that President Biden is going to be alive on January 20th, 2029. That's my opinion. And you could say I'm wrong and that's fine, but that's the risk that's at stake right now. And it's a big one. We'll continue. Presidency is the most straining job in the world, and it's 24-7. How can you say you'll be up for that next year, in two years, in four years, given the limits you've acknowledged that you have today? The limits I've acknowledged I have? There's been reporting that you've acknowledged that you need to go to bed earlier and your evening around 8. That's not true. Look, <laughs> what I said was, Instead of my every day starting at seven and going to bed at midnight, it'd be smarter for me to pace myself a little more. And I said, for example, the eight, seven, six stuff, instead of starting a fundraiser at nine o'clock, start at eight o'clock. People get to go home at 10 o'clock. That's what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about, and if you look at my schedule since, I've, since I made that stupid mistake of, in the campaign, in the, in the debate, I mean, my schedule has been full bore. I've done, where's, and where's Trump been? Riding around in his golf cart, filling out his school. You see, here's the problem. And this is a lesson in politics that everyone either understands or will ultimately understand. If, if you're constantly on defense, you're losing. That's how it works. Trump isn't even addressing this. Trump hasn't even come out 
and made a joke yet about the president saying Vice President Trump. I'm sure he'll come up with something clever. He always does. And MSNBC, of course, put out Biden on VP Harris doesn't address the fact that he said VP Trump. It is what it is. There have been numerous reports that he does have trouble in terms of his vitality past a certain time. You know, the man is in his 80s. That's not unheralded. And you're asking him, you're asking this frail old man to be the leader of the free world, where, to be honest, when it comes to being the president, you're really not allowed to get a lot of sleep. You're just not. That the job ages you exponentially. And I don't think there really is a way that he can answer the question without it being used against him in some way. Work hard before he hits the ball. I mean, look, uh, he's done virtually nothing. And again, you could say all of those things about the president or the former president, and, and it all may be true, but it's not giving confidence to the people in question. And this isn't even addressing some of the more pressing issues that we're dealing with here. You know, that that's a huge misnomer. You know, that that is a big deal. We have acknowledged the fact that while some of these things I think are overrated, I do think that Biden has put decent people into the NLRB. I think that that does matter. But remember, we're, we're assessing the pros and the cons here. And I don't doubt for a second that somebody like Trump will be much worse for the NLRB than somebody like Biden. But again, when you have so many holes in the bucket, you plug one and another sinks. So what do you think is going to happen? If, if there was reason to believe that we were heading in that right direction, that would be one thing, but we're not. And that's not even addressing the genocide, which he absolutely is helping facilitate. We'll continue. This, says, this, con this concludes. Respectfully, earlier you misspoke in your opening answer. You referred to Vice President Harris as Vice President Trump. Right now, Donald Trump is using that to mock your age and your memory. How do you combat that criticism from tonight? Listen to him. This concludes tonight's press conference. I mean, I don't understand. That is a terrible shot, screen capture of Joe in that spot. Didn't mean to do that, but it happens. Uh, and, you know, you're right. Andrew's right. It's not about Biden versus Trump yet. It's Biden versus a better Dem candidate. The convention has not happened yet, and the convention this time is happening very late. It's happening near the end of August. In fact, the convention begins right around Jen's election against Wasserman Schultz. So it's very unique. And if you're waiting until then, and you're going to make a switch, basically two and a half months prior to election day, that's, that's too late. Like it really is. At that point, it's too late. Now, I don't know what's going to happen. All I'm really concerned about right now is what we can control here in South Florida, because Jen has a shot to win this race. Florida is going to go red. I'm pretty sure everybody recognizes that, at least I hope they do. But I, I think the ability to see the future through the lens of changing something locally and having it turn into something bigger is really where our impact can be the biggest, can, can really be felt the most. Uh, you see, Biden ain't going anywhere. He's the nominee. I want an open convention. Uh, and then, of course, you have the polls. Some of the polls don't lie. It gives a strong consensus against Biden. It's true. And as I said, if you're playing defense, you're losing. That's how politics works.